I call to order the Town of New Windsor Town Council meeting for April 3rd, 2024. If everyone would rise and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We go by an agenda. Our meetings are recorded electronically. Uh, anyone wishing to have something placed on the agenda should have had it for, for council discussion, should have had it to the town hall by the previous Wednesday um, for, uh, by 3 o'clock. Anyone wishing to speak tonight, we ask you to, if you're not on the agenda, to sign the sheet over there. Anyone wishing to speak will have three minutes uh, to speak. So that signs up. Approval of minutes from the March 6, 2024 Town Council meeting. Dana's emailed them out to everybody. Do I hear a motion for approval of amendment? I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. We have a motion and second for approval of the minutes of the March 6, 2024 Town Council meeting. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor, sing five, we can sing aye. 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 Those opposed, so carry. Mayor's report, uh, quite a busy month, um, especially on the economic development. Uh, you, did you get my? I did not. Did you get an email? Mm -mm. Uh, it should be on there somewhere. I sent it to you. Well, I'll, I'll check again. All right. Uh, on March 8th, we gave a tour um, with Paige Sunderland, uh, a potential uh, investor to, who was looking for sites for a go-kart track. I showed him a couple places here and then took him to Union Bridge. Um, I just don't think it's uh, going to work here. Uh, there was a couple of drawbacks and, uh, you know, it would have brought a lot of people into town with uh, races and everything, but uh, uh, just I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, on March 15th, gave a tour of Dealman Inn to three potential investors for a distillery. Councilman Huffman accompanied one of the investors along with his general contractor uh, later, uh, about a week later. And their next step is to bring in one or two of their structural engineers to be able to create a scope of work and cost estimates. If they remain interested in this important project, I suggested that they that we have an informational meeting to discuss all of their their ideas. Uh, probably uh, supposed to be in April or May. Um, complete it and submit it to Sustainable Communities application, which is vital for grant applications and contacted State Highway Administration for an update and requested better communications. I'm not sure if that's happened yet or not, but we'll, we'll, we'll stay on it. Uh, attended the first task force meeting with Councilman Huffman and Councilman Cornick, uh, along with Fire Department members Chief Steve Cromer, Brian Bowers, and Braden uh, Masters. We went over expectations and responsibilities and then toured both floors of 2000. 11 or 200, 211 High Street, and that's the original fire hall next door that we're looking into turning into apartments for um, volunteer firefighters to, to uh, remain in New Windsor. Um, I think it's a win-win situation. Um, we'll get into some grant information later. Um, See, attended and presided over the MML Carroll chapter dinner and meeting. Uh, coordinated a meeting with David Smith, who is the new owner of the Baltimore Sun, uh, which oversees the Carroll County Times, uh, for a meeting with the mayors of Carroll County. Uh, he liked to get the Carroll County Times back to the way it was and cover local, local news a little bit better. Um, Along with Councilman Huffman, participated in a conference call to discuss a partnership opportunity with the New Windsor Fire Department project. That's the 211 High Street project. Also participating were Charles Day, Daryl Connolly, and Nicholas Meyer with the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. Charlie talked about the loan program that he administers. Uh, however, Nick talked about two grant programs that 211 High Street renovations would be eligible for. Uh, attended and emceed the New Windsor Fire and Hose Company number one 75th anniversary banquet. Um, 
And then also I had re requested and received citations from the governor, state delegation, and county commissioners, along with the one from the, the town. Uh, and I also attended and emceed the New Windsor Lions Club, 76 Charter Night. I guess the, when you MC, you get the free meal. But uh, um, And then attended the Lions Club annual community Easter egg hunt, which was well attended. Uh, on March 26, uh, I think we all know of the incident at the Francis Scott Key uh, um, Bridge. Um, when I f heard about it um, that morning, I sent uh, a, a message to uh, the governor's office that uh, um, they had uh, my prayer concerns, and uh, he uh, recognized that today at a press conference. So. And then funding opportunities that I'm researching in or working on, Congressman Rupert, Rupert Berger's uh, fiscal year 2025 appropriation request process, the community legacy, and um, DHC, the uh, Marty Family Energy Efficiency and Housing Afford uh, Affordability Program, and Rural Maryland Council grant resources. The Maryland, Rural Maryland Council has a grant that will be opening up uh, April 15th for energy saving appliances that if we were to, to um, purchase appliances for the fire department um, uh, renters, then we could get grants for all that. So save everybody a lot of money. So it's been a busy month. Anybody have any questions, comments? Thank you. Agenda here. All right, Mayor's report, Councilman Committees, uh, Community Enhancement. Uh, Tom uh, had sent me an email that he was not going to be here, and it's an excusable, it is excusable uh, absence, so uh, he didn't have any report. Public Works, Councilman Huffman. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, Public Works highlights for the past month. Well, spring is here, which starts the mowing season for all of us. Uh, Public Works is no exception. They have already started cleaning up and mowing the town parks. Uh, Public Works has also cleaned up the school walking trail and trimmed many branches that were impeding the path. Um, we have already received quite a bit of rain, especially the last several days, and, and we had several windstorms which have knocked down a lot of dead branches from trees around the town. Public Works has been proactively cleaning up the town properties after these events. Um, Although there's no guarantees, Public Works believes the winter weather is behind us and as such has removed the salt equipment from the town trucks. Everything has been thoroughly clean, greased, and ready for summer storage. Uh, Public Works will start picking up yard waste, uh, weather dependent of course, tomorrow April 4th. This year yard waste pickup is both Thursday and Friday of the scheduled week to ensure Public Works has enough time to make their rounds. Pickup is scheduled for the first full week of the month and the third week of the month. Exact dates are listed in the town newsletter. Please have your yard waste out Wednesday night before pickup. Uh, you can use cans or bags. They should be less than 40 pounds, please. If you use a can or bin, ensure it is covered so it does not fill with rainwater. And please, no dog waste or trash mixed in with the yard waste. Bulk Trash Day is Saturday, April 27th. Bring your items to Gear Lane facility between 8 and 12. Details can again be found in the town newsletter. And lastly, Public Works is preparing for the Town Beautification Day, which is also scheduled for April 27th. Come meet us here at Town Hall at 8 a.m. and volunteer some time to help New Windsor remain a beautiful place to live. Uh, the Planning Commission, we did meet in March. Uh, we continue to perform final review of the chapters in the comprehensive plan. Our next scheduled meeting is April 22nd. And some uh, council highlights. I've been attending the Town Council and Planning Commission meetings, and you heard uh, Mayor Roop talk about uh, several other meetings that I have participated in with him, the 211 Task Force meeting, um, the meeting with the Department of Community Development about grants, and the uh, walk through of the Dillman Inn with the private investors. I also attended the MML uh, meetings. Thanks, sir. Thank no you. Busy person. All right, water and sewer, Councilman Hall. 
So we had uh, one leak. It was on the 300 block of Main Street. Uh, the water leak was hard to detect because there was a nearby storm drain, so it, it really didn't come up into the street. It was draining off into that. Um, but Public Works did find it, locate it, and then had it repaired temporarily while uh, they're waiting for the Maryland 31 water line to be finished uh, to, to permanently fix that. Um, and then in other news, also wipes. Uh, Public Works has had to repair some backups on the sewer mains. So uh, some things are common. You don't want to throw plastics down a trash. Uh, your trash, uh, trash isn't for the toilet. Uh, but there is less common things, uh, less known things of even flushable wipes. Some flushable wipes do have plastics in it, um, which keep it from breaking down. Uh, so just don't flush anything that shouldn't be flushed. Um, and then that, that prevents uh, public works from having to uh, respond to a sewer backup. As everybody knows that ever had to deal with a sewer backup, it could get costly. Um, so let's all try to prevent that. That's all I have. Thank you. That's been ongoing forever. Many years. <laughs> usually, it uh, might be wrong, but it's usually about $3,000 to take care of a, mm -hmm. a clog. So... Um, just because it says flushable doesn't mean it's really, you know, for the toilet. Public safety and health, uh, Councilman Cornick. Good evening, everyone. Uh, before I jump into public safety, I wanted to uh, add, um, uh, Councilman uh, Hall, when we did the uh, tour of the pump stations, the other thing we noticed was, and I, I'm only bringing this up because I have culprits in my household who used to pour grease down the drain. I said use is, used to is uh, the operative term there. But anyway, um, grease is a big thing. And I was wondering, have we kind of uh, helped correct that? Because we haven't I, seen a big one, but yeah. knock on wood there. <laughs> knock on wood. Because, yeah, it, it, that's the thing is it, same with the flushable wipes. People don't realize that it, it could not be flushable. Same thing happens in your kitchen where... It grease goes down uh, like a liquid, but in those pipes, it solidifies, and it just builds up and builds up, and then it will close. Yeah, we had a little incident at home where I was like, I know you're not pouring that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, for public safety and health, uh, I did uh, had a few um, uh, meetings that I attended over the week. Um, I was had the benefit of attending, uh, again, the uh, Carroll County Overdose Prevention Coalition, and tonight we have some guests from the uh, Carroll County Health Department. Thank you for attending. Um, uh, so I'll let them introduce themselves and, and, and present their information. Also attended the MML dinner uh, that was hosted by the town of, New Wind or town of w Westminster. Um, also attended the uh, 211 task force for the renovation, of the potential renovation of the old fire hall next, uh, next door, as the mayor mentioned. And then uh, also attended the 75th anniversary for the uh, New Windsor Fire Department. So that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Economic development, Councilwoman Schultz. Before I give my report, I'm going to say what Councilman Pauls always used to say. <laughs> no wipes in the pipes. Yeah. Right. Just because it says it's flushable doesn't mean it actually is. And it costs a lot of money to get them out of there. All right. So... We have a few um, more people in the room than usual. I'm going to just explain a couple of things in my report. Like everybody else, I attended the town meetings. I represent the town on the Human Services Programs, or HSP Board, uh, which is a, uh, an org a com they call a community action organization. And what they're best known for in Carroll County is providing housing and homeless services, but they also provide a lot of economic support to people who... Um, may need it with things like utilities and food, et cetera. So um, they, they have two meetings a month, and I attended both of those. And like everybody else, I went to the Maryland Municipal League chapter, Carroll County chapter meeting. The Economic Development Group did not meet. They are organizing a table for um, Carroll County um, at the MML convention in Ocean City. Um, I, I talked with um, Town Clerk Mangus and Watering and Sewing Bill, Bill Clerk Hirsch to um, so we're going to start regularly having p pages in the newsletter that highlight businesses and doing some stuff on some social media too. So we're going to be scheduling that meeting soon because the, uh, the, the newsletter just was, was too late for this one. Um, 
Oh, it's too bad Councilman Gubernais um, wasn't able to join us tonight. He and I were supposed to meet with former Councilwoman Ribbon Linderman tonight. Um, he's been you know, having some surgeries and stuff since he came on the council, but now that he's doing better, I thought it would be a good idea to sit down with her and have her go over some of the resources um, that she used and some of the information because she did some really great community enhancement projects while she was on the council. So we've rescheduled that for the 22nd. Uh, there's a bunch of upcoming business education through the economic development in the chamber. And I'm gonna put them all on Facebook, but they have some great topics like website development, and understanding accounting and financial statements. And then this is the last month to get in applications for the um, Maryland Municipal League's $1,000 scholarship. And the deadline is the 26th and you have to send stuff into the town of um, Hampstead. The information's on their website. Thank okay. you. Town manager, Gary. Yeah, a couple things here. The Blue Ridge pump station upgrade. Uh, we're still working through the time consuming process of submittals and the permitting process. The Maryland 31 water main improvement project, uh, Mid Atlantic is installing sewer cleanouts that have about 15 to 20 left to do yet. Uh, this week has been hampered, uh, this weather this week has hampered progress. We had our monthly progress meeting on the 27th of March and above the above ground water system bypass and new water main installation will begin again on or about the second week in April. Uh, Public Works property survey site plan and design the RFP was sent to five local survey and engineering firms on February 28th. The site visits were scheduled upon request and proposals were due March 27th. Three proposals were received and I'll put together a comparison spreadsheet for most likely the April work session. Uh, I had a request to use the Lions Club field. Uh, received the call from Steve Turner with West Carroll Rec Council requesting use of uh, Lions Club field for youth softball. Um, the town is in the third year of a license agreement with uh, Reapers Baseball Club. Uh, Reapers Baseball Club requested priority use of Lions Club field in exchange for maintenance of the field and grounds um, in the agreement um, which is in the folder tonight and pulled it back out to uh, re review that the uh, field availability is uh, as follows town of New Windsor on an ad needed basis for single events with minimum one week notification maintenance and dragging of the field and cleaning up trash as needed West Carroll rec same thing on an as needed basis for events single events um, and then Reapers Baseball Club for year-round use. The agreement also states the long-term regular use of the field by the town of New Windsor and or West Carroll Rec Council shall require submittal of schedule to the town manager. In the event a long-term schedule uh, regular use is requested uh, is received by myself, uh, we'll coordinate with the Reapers Club before uh, making the decisions and schedules. And I reached out to uh, Reapers Baseball, informed them of the request, and asked them for uh, their spring and summer schedule. And with coordination, cooperation, I'm sure we can accommodate both organizations. So, waiting to hear back from them, and then I'll I, um, re I'll reach back out to uh, to Steve. Uh, just some uh, uh, upcoming meetings: the Monday, April 25th, will be the work session. Wednesday, May 1st is a council meeting and we're uh, budget hearing and adoption at that meeting and then may 20th uh will be the work session again that's all i have is paul still um with the uh reapers both both paul Bergie and paul manzo yeah ron manzo sorry yeah he hasn't they haven't discussed any more about using cybels fields uh -huh. all right thank you mm -hmm. public works director uh, good evening. The following tasks have complete, been completed in the last month. Uh, we did some sewer station maintenance and wet well cleaning, um, our annual generator maintenance, repairs and maintenance at our Rooks Meadow Spring, installation of a commercial water meter, and installation of 15 radio read devices throughout town. Um, we also were part of a uh, semi-final inspection at Snyder Summit. Town Manager Dye and Public Works participated in the final inspection of, or the semi-final inspection at Snyder Summit. Uh, the, the inspection, um, basically we found a few cracked curbs, 
um, some stormwater inlet adjustments, uh, a couple issues with some of the pedestrian walkways, and some miscellaneous uh, concrete issues. Other than that, uh, everything's looking good. And we are due for a paving inspection soon, uh, and then final paving. Um, something else to note uh, in regards to well drilling that I've been talking about uh, now for several council meetings. Um, we're still waiting on uh, to finalize paperwork for permission to drill at 1000 Green Valley Road. Um, Town Manager Dyes made several attempts to um, contact uh, parties involved, um, and we're not seeing uh, much movement there. Um, unfortunately, you know, we need to get that agreement in place um, to submit our MDE packet. Um, and in the packet, um, you know, there's a lot of detail and information about where we want to drill. There's health department inspections that have to happen. Um, and there's the approval from MDE. So that project's been delayed now. Uh, we would have already been drilling. Um, so we're probably at least a month and a half, two months behind on that. Um, and then lastly, um, town staff met recently to discuss projects, ongoing projects, and how to distribute ARPA fund money to get some of the projects uh, taken care of and, and money allocated. And that's all I have. Thank you. Community Deputy. We have the Yes, we do. All right. Good evening, everyone. I apologize if I stumble a little bit on this one because I didn't get time to review this today. <laughs> you guys know how I get when that's the case. So between March 6th and April 3rd, 2024, the Carroll County Sheriff's Office responded to 44 calls for service within the town of New Windsor. Out of those calls for service, seven were reportable on 3-14-24. At 7.34 p.m., a tobacco violation occurred in the 2800 block of New Windsor Road. It, the clerk failed to identify the minor who requested to purchase a pack of Newport cigarettes, a civil citation was issued in reference. On 317 24 at 9 a.m., a death investigation took place in the 2800 block of Union Square. The investigation determined uh, the descendant passed away from natural causes. The funeral home was responded and further plans were taken with the family. On 319 24 at 222 p.m., a fraud was reported in the 100 block of Church Street. The victim's bank account was used for an international purchase of $4,000. The victim was later refunded by the bank. On 321-24 at 1.42 p.m., a suspicious activity was reported in the 100 block of Church Street. The business owner uh, observed very unusual behaviors on the video surveillance uh, at, at his store by the subject that entered the business uh, just before it opened. The subject was observed running uh, to and from their vehicle and taking pictures of the business. The subject was accompanied by a second person who was sitting in the rear seat of the vehicle, uh, which appeared to be a 2000 to 2006 Chevy Sub Suburban Z71, white in color, with an unknown Virginia plate. On 325-24 at 5.58 p.m., a subject was reportedly threatening self-harm in the 1200 block of Union Bridge Road. Upon deputies' arrivals, they confirmed this information and transported the subject to Carroll Hospital Center for an emergency petition. On 327-24 at 11.33 p.m., an accident with injury was recorded in the 400 block of Main Street. Both the driver and occupant of the vehicle were transported to Carroll Hospital Center with non-life-threatening injuries. The driver was later charged with driving without a license and the suspicion of reckless driving. On 3-31-24 at 5-18 p.m., an overdose was recorded in the 200 block of Main Street. The subject uh, advised that they consumed a large amount of methadone to which they were prescribed. Oh, she got it. Flip the page today. <laughs> no evidence of additional CDS was found, and the subject was transported to Carroll Hospital Center. Um, on additional notes, uh, I posted up there the steering wheel locking devices are still available in the, in the lobby. Um, we've had an increase in vehicle break ins in the county, not vehicle deaths, but break ins, just stealing some coins and change, but might be a good idea to ascertain one of those here if you would like. Um, they are free of charge. Uh, National Night Out registration is open, currently seeking uh, donations and fundraisers for support for this year's event. Uh, I wanted to uh, share with everyone the flyer that I just put out. I think uh, Kim has a copy of this because I had sent that out to her this week. Um, but uh, I think it's, I would like this year's event to be a, a nice turnout. So anyone that's interested, I have registrations here. 
uh, and um, any anyone that has any uh, interest in the event and wants to shoot a message by me, just it, it could be just having having a vendor show up. Uh, just reach out to me. Feel free to reach out to me regarding this event. Um, I just wanted to post. I know the health department is going to touch on this, but I wanted to post a number for the crisis helpline, uh, which is 410-952-9552. Uh, the Carroll County Mo Mobile Crisis Team is open seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 12 a.m., and then 988 for immediate emotional support. There's a couple things that were not mentioned in the briefing that were in the surrounding area, which were concerning, and that's why we have them here tonight. So we just want to reach out to people that may need, need help, and we want the community to know that we're here with them and we're a team and we can work together to get you the support that you need. So that being said, that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, as always, Lions Club will help out with uh, National Night Out. Thanks, sir. Food. Last year, tremendous support by Lions Club. I don't think it could have happened without you guys, so thank you very much. All team effort. Thank you. Absolutely. West Carroll Rec Council. Do you have anything? I do not. Did Ronnie Blackston get a hold of you? And okay. they have a meeting. I think their meeting is Monday. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'll double check. All right. Thank you. Fire Chief, uh, he's working tonight, um, but uh, just a little update on the kickoff meeting that we had for the 211 High Street Task Force. Uh, he sent out an email that was very detailed on what uh, uh, everybody's responsibilities are, who's going to do what. So he's uh, really uh, been, been very active with that. Um, at this time, I'll uh, ask EMS Captain David Coe to come forward and say a few words. So, uh, I'm going to ask the mic. But uh, for the month of March, we had a total of 34 fire calls. It's just for the viewers. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. The viewers. Uh, <laughs> a total of 34 fire calls for the month of March, 76 EMS calls. Um, we have a couple big fundraising events coming up. Uh, May 18th will be the Money Bonanza that we have with Harney Fire Department out at Harney. And then uh, from the May 21st through May 25th is our Fire Department Carnival. So we're the first of the carnival, carnival season in Carroll County. Um, there'll be a bunch of advertising here shortly on it. We've already announced the entertainment. Uh, Tuesday night is 39 North. Wednesday night is Jay Henley and Stonebrook. Uh, band Thursday night's Rock Hero or Radio Hero. Sorry about that. Friday night is Payload, and Saturday night is the Brickyard Road. On um, the main businesses in the area, want to sponsor or help sponsor the carnival. Uh, I have flyers here. If people want them, we'll daily hand them out. Um, also, on a different note, we're, we're I came because uh, I want to see if the department or the town would be interested in the AED. So we just recently upgraded some of our AEDs across all of our apparatus. Are left with us with seven AEDs that are completely functional, but they're near and they're in, I wouldn't say they're in the service life, but they're in the service life. Um, so if you guys wanted it, the town would be interested in AED, or putting an AED as a public access AED, uh, we'd be willing to work with you guys with that. And then to explore possible future other thought processes or different things with that. And if you guys want CPR training, we can facilitate some type of CPR training. I know we're working with Alliance Club to do some hands only CPR and some community based CPR as well. So, uh, just for something for you guys to think about, um, we have those available resources for you guys. Any questions for the fire department? No, yeah, but uh, the giant parade, 7 p.m. Wednesday yeah. night, the 22nd, starts at 7 p.m. No more running, no more wrap. Yeah. Uh, the route will be posted on the New Winter Fire Department website. We will also probably put those little tracker things so people can follow where the parade is. So. I'm not sure when it starts, but tradition starts by blowing the siren. So uh, when you hear the siren blow, I pray you start. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No Treasury report. Uh, not much to report. Okay. Money is good. Uh, music on the main applications are available. We have five so far, just by Facebook posts. I will be reaching out to vendors. You need to schedule a meeting probably next week or the following week, maybe. I got you. I'll shoot an email out to you. All right. Thank you. Water and sewer billing clerk. Hi, everyone. Uh, not much to report. Uh, newsletters, has, they have hit homes, and water bills will be sent out in the next couple of days. Thank you. Joan, code enforcement. 
Okay, so the update on the vehicles is we are going to start with trailers, first and foremost. So we have a um, violation letter that's going to go out shortly. Oh, my bad. Um, we have a violation letter that's going to go out shortly to start that. Um, we have a citation for if that addresses to that part um, that I'm going to get approved after probably after the meeting tonight with Michelle. Um, and then we're going to move forward with that. So we are making progress and we're going to start this thing. All right. Does anybody have any questions about that? No, That's just a comment that uh, I've received positive feedback from some residents. Uh, they, they saw the, the meeting and are, are glad that we're addressing it. What the end result will be, when it will be. But they are glad that we are addressing it. So, and I will say, since driving around since the last meeting, just around town, um, some things have been moved. Um, some trailers have been moved off the roadway and onto private property. So, um, people were watching our meeting, and I'm glad that they're going to take positive to it. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. I hear new business. Jones's Senator Summit residents, water and sewer rates fee. If you would come over here to get the microphone, make sure it's on. Name and address. Did you turn it off? Green mic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Amy Jones, and um, my husband and I, we are residents um, in the Senator Summit, the new community. And we are here on behalf of our community. And we're here about the water fees, the rates. Um, the residents of Snader Summit Community in New Windsor, we're facing an issue that affects our daily lives and financial stability with the high cost of water bills. The fees attached to these bills have been escalating, um, and this places a undue burden on households already struggling with other expenses. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, average water bill across the country should not exceed 2.5% of a household's income. However, for many families in New Windsor, this percentage is significantly higher due to inflated fleet fees. Um, this situation is not sustainable and it's time for a change. And we're calling upon our local government officials to review and reduce these excessive water bill fees immediately. It's essential that we ensure affordable access to this basic human necessity for all residents of New Windsor. Um, this has impacted so many families that are used to being taxed with so many hefty fees and rates. And we kindly, we kindly ask that this is looked into and or addressed in the near future. We also have individuals in place that are willing to look into grants they may, that may can assist with any outstanding debts pertaining to the infrastructure of the water system. And we have um, did a petition. We have signatures from the residents in the Snader Summit community. And we just, you know, want answers. If we can come together. We have a, a retiree who um, just retired from Frederick County. Grant is her background. That's all she does, did when she was working for Frederick County, and she's willing and able to put in all the time and effort to look for grants that can help and assist with any outstanding debt that we understand has occurred in New Windsor from the infrastructure that has been done. So we just, you know, it's just really need to be addressed and we just want to know if anything is in the future going to be addressed towards it or you know what happened let me give you a little history uh, when we put in the new wastewater treatment plant um, before we even had to start paying back um, it was over a four million dollar project and we didn't have we weren't going to receive any funding from the state because we were not what i call one of the big 66 boys which got funding from the Bay Restoration Fund. You had to disperse 250,000 gallons per day, um, and we're, we're nowhere near that. We're only about 80, 80 85,000 gallons per day. So we did not meet um, the requirements to get funding. However, the town manager at that time, Wally Brown and I, 
we went down to Annapolis and got a supplemental grant for $550,000 to lower the, the loan to $3.8 million. Uh, that wasn't good enough for me. Um, along with uh, town manager Frank Schaefer and I, we went down to Annapolis, met with uh, Maggie McIntosh, who was the delegate um, from Baltimore County, I believe, Baltimore City, and we ended up getting a $2 million grant. So I know about grants. So we got a $2 million grant, and that lowered the base rate by about $50. Um, in 2015, um, I wasn't uh, still happy with that, so um, I had Delegate Don Elliott actually introduce and pass legislation that would make the Bay Restoration Fund fair and equitable to all 157 municipalities, just not 66. So with that, I contacted uh, Delegate Susan Krebs at the time um, to see whether or not we couldn't get money from the Bay Restoration Fund, which we got a million dollars for. So we uh, lowered, with my efforts, we lowered the uh, loan by $3.55 million. Now, I think that's doing pretty good getting grants. Um, and basically, it, it lowered our uh, sewer rates by $87.50. So we have a history of lowering water and sewer rates. Um, with, you know, your utilities, um, you know, I, I don't see the, the thing about your, your national numbers, that's, that's not fair numbers due to the fact that we only have 800 and some, 811 users, if you will. And when you have a million dollar project, you got to spread it over 811, 811 users. It's a lot tougher to pay a bill than Westminster that has over 10,000 users. They can spread it out a lot farther. That's where we're hurt by not having large amount of users on the system. Um, the council has been very aware of our water and sewer rates. We've kept the rates the same for the past two years, last year and then this year with the budget introduction tonight. Um, um, we're keeping the water and sewer rates the same. Most municipalities are not keeping them the same. Carroll County government in the past two years has raised the water and sewer rates 14%. And, you know, there again, they have how many users, Gary? Uh, they're listing 26,000 total 26, throughout users. the county. So when they raise rates, they, it's a lot easier to, to get more money from 26,000 users than 811 users. Now, if you wanted us to decrease what goes into our reserve, I think that's a huge mistake. And I'll give you an example. Before COVID, projects, construction projects, increased about 8% annually. After COVID, it's probably about 12 or 15%. But just using 10% increase, annual increase, because if we cut back on reserve, we're not going to be able to do our projects that need to be done. Because we kicked the can down the road many, many years ago, and now we're paying for it. I don't want future generations to pay more than what they have to. However, a million dollar project that is pushed down five years will end up costing 1.6 million. If you push it down 10 years, it's $3.6 million, which to me is not good stewards of the taxpayers' money. We are constantly trying to lower water and sewer rates. We've been working with our delegation. Um, Councilman Huffman presented to our delegation three years ago and received $4 million for the water line project so that we, the residents don't have to pay for that. That would probably be, would probably be about another $100 a quarter if we had to pay for a $4 million project. They also received, the town received $3.5 million for the upgrade of the wastewater treatment plant, which, again, the residents don't have to pay that increase. So we're doing a tremendous amount that people don't want to understand, but we're doing everything we can to keep the rates as low as possible. Now, on the other side, the utilities, 
you know, you're, you're talking the average resident pays $135 a month for water and sewer. In some, Snader Summit, some of the electric bills are $140 a month. I checked with First Energy. The internet and cable is anywhere from $150 to $200 a month. Phones for two people can be anywhere from $100 to $150, depending on the plans and everything. So our water and sewer rates, do we want them lower? Sure. But unless somebody has a great answer, and you can't always just apply for a grant to lower water and sewer rates, because those expenses have already been there. You need to go to Annapolis, which we have shown here we've done, to the total of seven and a half and four point five, twelve million dollars we've gotten from the state. I think for a small town that's doing really well. So I hear everything that you're saying, and thank you for the clarification. The question at hand is not the usage. We understand the usage of what we use is the usage. The question at hand is the rates. For example, a household of three, we pay almost $500 quarterly. I just purchased a brand new home a year and a half ago, my husband and I. I purchased a tub. I cannot utilize that tub because guess what? I know I'm gonna get slammed with a large water bill. I can't, we can't utilize our water hose to water our grass because they tell us to water the grass. You got a new home, water the grass. We can't because of the extensive usage of the water bill. So it's not the usage, it's the, it's the rates. We pay, we use $164 quarterly on top of 200 and some odd dollars in fees. That's what all of us are, you know, huffing and, and hollering about. That's, that's the issue at hand. So we understand what we use is what we use. It's the rates and these fee, the fees that are like, that's like 200 some dollars. I mean, it's, it's, that's what we're asking to be looked into. Um, we went door to door and every resident, about 50% of the residents participated and everyone had the same, same scenario, the same thing. Everyone, we have even seven families that recently moved out of the neighborhood because of the high water bill, people can't afford it. On top of, we have to pay $500 to the, um, which has nothing to do with New Windsor, but we have to pay $500 yearly to the, um, the builder for bringing in the whole water system within the community. So it's the underground system. So it's, yeah. it's just something we're asking to be looked at. And, and Mayor, the whole comparison, I mean, the whole, Whole, I feel like the whole bringing up the, the other municipal counties or whatever, you said 26,000 Westminster. That's all. They, all they going up 14%. That's, that's, 20, that's through 26,000 people. Right. It's, that's not going to hurt their pocket for so much. Around here, I mean, again, we water our water, I mean, our water our lawn, we paying over $1,000. For a bill, that's you know I'm thinking of if we're trying to increase this town, that's a deterrent. People are not going to come here if they know about a large water bill. I mean, it's kind of like it's 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 really affecting the families all around. It, it's also very important to differentiate the base rate and the water usage. Like you brought up the water usage. The usage I think is like seven. 60 uh, um, per thousand per thousand gallons. Um, eight, 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 so, eight, so, eight, eight, so eight, eight dollars yeah. for water yeah. for, for gallon. per, per gallon. thousand gallons. So if if you end up using a lot of water, you're looking at maybe a twenty thirty dollar difference. The real the real impact is the base rates, and and as the mayor said, it was. The the base rates are specifically for the the projects that that are distributed. So for every project, let's say uh, you know four million dollar project is you know fifty to a hundred dollars per resident, and that's where you get into the to the big numbers, and that's where that's where the issue comes because we also still have another twelve million dollars in projects 
Uh, most notably, our main water source, which comes from a farm outside of town. Um, that's one of the oldest water lines in, in the area. So um, that's important because we have had incidents in the past. I think uh, probably the most notable would be around Thanksgiving two years ago. Um, where we had an incident with that. And um, so it, it definitely is, uh, it, it is a large burden, um, but, but there is reasons to it. And, and, and uh, we've also had studies in, in the past year to, to help mitigate that. Um, and as a result of those studies, we froze the wet rates instead of raising them annually like they were going to go uh, 3%. Rate study also said to increase. The last rate study did say we should increase significantly. Actually, I think it was like twenty percent. It was a lot, um, and so, we ended up not going. With so, that. do you just continue to tax the residents? I, mean, we're, I, I we're understand that you. We, we froze last right. year, and we're freezing this year. I understand. Freeze. I heard that, but you said that Council Hoffman got funding three years ago. What was done outside of that since then? Has any funding, you know, tried any more funding? Tried to, you well, guys, try to get any more funding? I, I send our delegate. Plus, I just mentioned that I'm going to be trying to get a million and a half from the Congress on appropriations to pay for the rest of the wastewater treatment plant upgrade. But so that's, that has nothing to do with the water and sewer. That we have. Yes, it will. Well, it will. Yeah. It will. Any loans, any loans that are taken for capital projects of, of facilities, water and sewer facilities, go directly to the rates. That's the base rate. That's that the we're ba base about. rate. Yeah. So and yeah. Your base rates together are about ninety dollars a month, which again for utilities of all everything across the board is is reasonable. Well, compared to your other utilities, yeah. your phone, your electric, your heat, your heat, your you know. So I think we're we're in line. Are they higher than what we want them? Sure, but two hundred something odd dollars is a lot. How much, how much do you pay for your other utilities? My our electric bill is one hundred and seventy five dollars a month. A month, yes. Right? yes. Yeah. So the average. We base our, our revenue projections on average of 10,000 gallons per quarter. Okay, some Westminster uses, or yeah, Carroll County uses 12,000 gallons per quarter. So the numbers based on that usage, I know that the usage varies, but that breaks down to 134.77 a month. I did the usage. No, total. total. With total. fees. Yes. And the everything. The average monthly fee based on 10,000 gallons. And you mentioned earlier that you read nationally that it's not the water and sewer bills per month are not to, are not supposed to exceed 2.5% of mm -hmm. income. Mm -hmm. Median income in, in New Windsor is right around $100,000. Look it up. I know it. It's there. And if you take 2.5% of $100,000, that's $2,500. I plugged into calculation. You would have to use between 25 and 30 thousand gallons a quarter to hit twenty five hundred dollars a month okay. a year. Well I have another question for you. Why is why are we why are, are our bills different from the homeowners that have been here prior to us? There's a, the there's a difference. The, the rates are all the same. It, 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 no, it might be different, but everybody pays the same base rates. We don't have a tiered system and the base rates are the base yeah, rates well, for I, all I the users. I met a resident from New Windsor and she did show me her bill and it wasn't the same. Because of the usage. No, it was not the same. I'm not not the usage, the rates. They there, weren't the same. There are some folks in New she Windsor was, that she, we're not grandfathered into these rates. I mean nobody is I have a grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. There are some folks in New Windsor that just have water and no sewage, so you would see a difference. In other words, if you have water and sewer, so that's that's probably it was a resident that was just supplied with water. There's a few. There's a handful. There's a handful yeah. that have one or the other. But everybody yeah. else pays the exact same rate. It's I mean, I'll bring my water bill in and show it if you'd like. It's the exact same rate. Well, well, it's the bottom line, that is a problem. It everybody, is. It is. Everybody is under the yeah. tax. So it is. Yeah. So it's not like we just sit up here and y'all. Y'all need to stop using water then. No, yeah. that's, not, that's not yeah. the case because everybody is. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, this water beer is it's, Every, it's, it's big. You know, the residents, so, we everyone, yeah. we we weren't we weren't privy to the water bill prior to buying their house. No, we were not. Yeah, yeah we were not. Because so, a lot of homeowners said they would not have bought homes out here if they didn't know about it. So let me say this. I think that I can speak for just about everybody except for the mayor because he's been here his entire life. But um, I've been here uh, roughly 25 years or 24 years this month. 25, 30, 25, 30, 30. almost 30. 30. And um, before that, my wife and I lived out of town and we had pretty much a zero water bill. It was set on septic. When we first moved into our house 24 years ago, I think our water bill might have been $35 a month, 135 a quarter. Um, it was a shock to us. But the difference is um, we were kind of we were kind of grow, growing as we moved, as the water rate went up, we kind of found out more information about it, um, about why the water rates went up. And we, we all pay about the same thing. I mean, I, I have a daughter who takes some really long showers. Trust me. I have to knock on the bathroom door a lot of times. Like, seriously, what are you doing? And she just moved back from college. Our water bill went from 300 to 400 a month for three people. Um, so I certainly don't want you to leave thinking nobody understands your concerns because they are legitimate concerns. But rest assured, because we're all in the same boat, and really we are, other than the folks that um, uh, uh, are, are Wayne said, um, we're all in the same boat on, on what we're spending, truthfully. Um, and that's, that's why our commitment to trying to find solutions is, is always there. Uh, but, you know, like Councilman Schultz, uh, Councilwoman Schultz said, I, I'd be happy to share our bills with you to show you. Um, but the other thing, Mr. Mayor, if you could elaborate on the, the age of our water system, because we're talking about a water system that's over 100 years old. And the, the problem with it is, is that infrastructure falls apart. I grew up in Baltimore City. We had the best water in the world, I thought. You know, but if you look at what Baltimore City the rates that they pay are considerable, not necessarily because of usage, but because of what you have to do for a rainy day. Um, like Councilman Hall mentioned a couple of years ago, we had a major water break and it was nothing that anybody, we didn't, we didn't look at. It was just one of those things, one, a pipe broke and there was expenses there. So that rate has to has to be reasonable enough to accommodate future issues if I'm not, if I'm speaking out of turn, please let me know. But we have to do a better job of managing what might happen in the future, as well as things that we know we have to re be repaired. And right now on the books, Councilman Hall, you mentioned how much our how much our current was it is twelve about twelve million, and and with times changing that we've seen with our past projects, they just tripled. Um, but also to that point too is I think. I think this is an issue that we're going to see more across the country, not just here, because uh, for years, like the mayor said, every municipality pushed off these big projects of repairing the, the water lines because they didn't want to increase the water rates. And in a, in a bit of good light is that we actually were able to get ahead of that. And because now we have the reserve, uh, a lot of municipalities don't have a reserve and just wait for something to break and then have to pull money from other sources. Um, so we are blessed in that sense. Um, but it, it is really, it, we're seeing it, not just Westminster, we're seeing it, uh, Baltimore is, is spiking as well. Um, it seems like every municipality that ends up doing an upgrade ends up spiking their rates and it because it was the same shock that that the residents here in 2008 had yeah, um, uh, let me just also you know i i get it you know I, when i became mayor in 2009 we had to put in a new wastewater treatment plant we had lagoons and we had no option so we put them in no funding however anyone that's been around me knows i'm persistent not many towns would have gotten about 85% of the loan knocked off. Bay Restoration Fund was paying about 50% at the time. Now, maybe they're paying more. But I very seldom just stop asking for money. 
the delegation gets a letter from me every year of our projects. And the, the, the grant writer that you talked about, we only have two loans that we could get either loan forgiveness or get a supplemental grant to knock off. However, in the base rate, it's only basically $21. Not, it would be nice to knock them off and lower your water and sewer bills, but the one um, is the wastewater treatment plant. You pay $9.99 um, a quarter for that loan. And for the pumping, the sewer pumping stations, you pay $11.96. And that was lowered because a little bit from twelve fifty six and fifteen bucks because we added basically two hundred more users. So every time you add that many users, it's going to decrease. But um, this year was not a good year in Annapolis because of the financial hardships that the state is, is facing. Um, that's that's a reality that everybody has to face. So the delegation gets my request every year. Um, been fortunate and we also got uh, a, uh, one of the loans um, paid off I forgot about that one uh, it was a year and a half ago two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars that we got from uh, delegate Haven shoemaker that wiped out a loan so I constantly request funding from the state you know anybody that knows me knows I don't stop and I will continue working because when I took over as mayor in 2009, I took the responsibility of every resident's um, quality of life, personally. Um, you know, my mom was living, she's gone, but I felt like everybody is on a fixed income. I don't care what age you are, unless you're in sales, or no offense, play, play the ponies for a living, <laughs> everybody's on a fixed income. I don't care whether your, your household income is 50,000 or 150,000, you still, at the end of the day, have the same financial hardships and try to make ends meet sometimes. So the council, I think, has been doing an outstanding job. Hopefully my leadership has helped. Um, I, I'm not sure many towns would have gotten the, the funding, like I said, uh, $12 million from the state of Maryland. Um, for a small town in just uh, uh, basically less than 10 years. So um, we're going to continue, but we can't stop upgrading our systems or we're going to pay for it. In future generations are going to pay worse than what they are now. So, and again, our, our water and sewer bills are, I think, in line with all the other utilities. Maybe even lower than the other utilities, but you know, we're gonna we, we look at it every year. You know, we we don't just take a five minute discussion on water and sewer rates. Just in the past four days, Councilwoman Schultz wants me to update the chronology 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 of the sewer and water oh, since 2011 when we put in the new wastewater treatment plant. And it got me thinking, and almost with Gary's help, um, came up with the numbers, and you know we're, we're not able to cut, you know, unless you want us to cut our reserve that we bring in every year for future projects. And I just think that's a, a mistake. Could it be done? Sure, but I just don't think it's in the best interest for years to come to cut our reserve. Mr. And Mrs. Jones, I'll, I have a copy of the uh, chronology. It that, needs to that be updated. It, it does, but it might give you a basis uh, for what we're. If, if you if if you think it's appropriate, it's on the website. It's too. on the website. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if you if you want to have it, I can burn another copy. It is on the website. And we do, uh, we do appreciate you coming in and and, and representing your residents. What's that? You can. You know, we, we there's not a. a a person in town that wouldn't like to see us lower water and sewer rates. Um, you know, our, our tax rate is has been uh, stable since how many years? Nine years. Nine, Nine years. years. We haven't raised our, our uh, property taxes. Uh, other municipalities have. Some are almost double what our taxes are. Uh, one town is probably 12 cents higher, and the other one might be like 18 cents higher. 
So, you know, uh, it's, it, it's a give and take. Are there water and sewer rates cheaper than ours? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm not so sure that you're ahead of the game. Um, so, but, look, you know, I will continue looking as, as in, the, in the PowerPoint presentation. I think it's here. I'll read it to you. And it's my philosophy, has been my philosophy. If I can get to the last page here. As your mayor, I have been very aggressive and successful in securing nearly 4.5 million in grants and agreements that have gone to help offset our water and sewer project loans, expenses, and lower your sewer bill. I want you to know that I, I'm persistently working to secure additional funding to help lower the town's loan debt and lower your water and sewer bill. Now, going forward, some of those grants will be for future projects. Now, you may not see a savings or a decrease in your water and sewer rate, but you're going to see if we get the 1.5 million, you're going to know that we didn't have to pass it on to you or anyone else. So, so we appreciate you. Just one well, I appreciate you showing interest and, and just let you know that you know this isn't the only way you can get involved in a town. We got a fire company, a Lions Club, Rec Council, and uh, um, Heritage Committee. We'd love to have you <laughs> and Lions Club. I said Lions talk, Club. We talked about the rates, but Town Hall also is very willing to work with you. Um, you can pay it. You don't have to pay that one lump sum at the quarter. We can. You can pay monthly. Um, Kim, right there, answers the phone. She is always willing to help anybody. Um, so I mean. Town staff understands too, and we're willing to help you as much as we can as well. So that's an option as well. So you don't pay that one giant lump sum. I don't live here, and I don't get that option in my town. And mine, I have a family of three, and I got my water bill, and I was like, what? I knocked on my son's door and was like, dude, five minute showers, no more 10 minute showers, you, you know? Do, you do live in another Carroll County. I do live in another Carroll Car 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 County municipality, yeah. So I understand when it's high, but um, you guys, New Winter does have that option. Okay, thank you. And it, it's 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 across the board, you know. Um, you know, I just think we've been a little more aggressive in getting supplemental grants. Um, you know, uh, without the grants, they would be another eighty-seven dollars a quarter. So, um, hopefully, people appreciate that. But you know, uh, usually it's not what you've done, but what are you doing now? So, but to answer your question, I will constantly be looking for funding to lower water and sewer bills. But uh, the two loans that I can work on, like I said, it would be $21 less if we, if we paid them off. So it's not huge. It's basically the operating expenses and, and the capital projects that we, we need to, to take care of. And like I say, we're, we're only 811 people to pass the, the bills off to, whereas, you know, County has 26,000 to pass the bills off to. Um, Westminster has over 10,000. That was years ago, so I, I don't know what their numbers are now. But um, you know, we're, and we're we're landlocked by farm preservation and inquiry to even think about expanding uh, for housing. So we are glad. I'm glad you're 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 New Windsor residents. Um, I'm sorry you didn't know about the water and sewer bills before. Uh, you must not be on Facebook, but uh, <laughs> but uh, um, again, the, the entire council and staff does everything they can to to, to maintain. You know, I mean, we were increasing three percent mm -hmm. rates annually, and then last last year, um, with the addition of some new houses, and this year with more houses, we we kept the the rates the same for the last two years. So in a way, that's a reduction that uh, you, you may not see, but it's better than another 6% increase on water in sewer. So just to let you know, we are, we take this very serious, uh, you know. So I appreciate you coming, and you're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. There's a few things that might be of interest to you, especially the next, but uh, you have any other questions or comments? I do. Okay. Um, you mentioned about the um, pickup of the... Uh, Yard waste. Oh, yes, they have not been coming last year. They have not come in this mayor's cemetery at all. A lot of us have to take our trash and dump it 
they're growing grass and everything. So if you could ask them to put us on the list to pick up as well. Everybody's on the list. They're on the list. So that, that actually, those services actually start when we take the subdivision over because if we're still in the inspection phase. So right after final paving, then we'll come in and then offer those services. Yeah, the, the, we, Wayne mentioned the, the final inspection we had up there. It was a three-phase project, Senator Summit, and they're, they're, they're finally built out in there. We met last week and did our... An inspection of the of the meters and valves and, and, and manholes and things like that. They have a few things to address the sidewalks where things got banged up during construction. They're going to fix those punch list items. Then Laney's scheduled to come in and surface pave, and then the developer will deed those roads over to the town. And then Same as snow removal. Yes, it's, it's, right now there it's a contractor doing snow removal. But when that happens, which is he's planning to pave. The end of April, May he was talking yeah, about. May. So and we'll then probably we'll come, then they'll deed the roads to the town, and then those will be town roads for plowing and, and pickup services and things like that. So I would figure sometime around June to be on the safe side because of the transfer of the property. Thanks so much. Right, well, welcome to New Windsor. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a lot to offer. We really do. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Carroll County Health Department presentation. Do I have a presentation for those? Still green. Still green. Do they have anything? Good evening. Thank you for having us and welcoming us. I am Amy Baker from the Carroll County Health Department. I'm Kathy Baker from the Carroll County Health Department. No relation to Amy. <laughs> <laughs> She's my supervisor, but no relation otherwise. So we really wanted to come and talk about uh, your behavioral health needs. Um, we are in the behavioral health unit at the health department, which means we kind of oversee and monitor and bring up services for people's mental health and mental well-being and substance use services. I did hear Deputy McGinnis talk about an overdose call. I know you get quite a few overdose calls here in New Windsor. It's everywhere. It's not specific to New Windsor. It doesn't discriminate. It doesn't disturb. Neither do mental health needs. So what we kind of wanted to talk about is what we can do to partner with you. Councilman Cornick comes to our, um, our overdose prevention coalition meetings. He is a wonderful participant and kind of asked us to come and speak with you all because it's an important component of everyday life. So what we really want to talk about is what we, some of the things we brought with us and then some of the other things that we have to offer. Um, one of the things that's really important is we do monthly um, classes. We partner with the Carroll Community College. You can't see this, but we'll no. leave it for you. There's money on the table. There's we money. send it out for your newsletter. And we teach mental health first aid classes. So if I have you take one, did you take it with me? Yeah. I think you did. <laughs> um, we teach mental health first aid. It's an eight hour curriculum. There's one for adults, one for youth, one for law enforcement. So we teach it all over the place. And what it really helps you to do is to understand, gain a, a an overview of what, what it looks like when somebody's becoming unwell in their mental health and what you can do as just a lay person to address it and who do you call? What do you do? How do we devise a plan in this moment? So it's a very beneficial class. Um, the other thing is, and that's here, you can register right through the community college. Um, Deputy McGinnis discussed 98. We have lots of 98 stuff. We always want people to call 988 if in doubt, if you think you're having a crisis, if you think your family member's having a crisis. And the crisis is really defined by the person. So it could be, um, you know, you're feeling suicidal and you need to call 988 because you don't know who else to call. And they're going to help you walk through what the process is and maybe what you can do or whether law enforcement needs to come and help you get to the hospital. Um, or it could be you're having a really bad day at school and you need somebody to talk to or a bad day at work, or a bad day in your home with your family. So 98 doesn't, it doesn't matter. Anybody can call, they're 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the holidays. And they also um, are able to um, do uh, American Sign Language translation. They have separate services for veterans, for people of the uh, LGBTQ plus, so that's the lesbian, gay, transgender population. Um, so there's all kinds of services through 98, and what they'll do is if somebody needs to come out and see you, 
they will patch through to our local mobile crisis teams. And the um, Deputy McGinnis also talked about those. He put the number up, the 952 number. But they can get directly in contact with them if they're on duty and get them to come out to your home or your neighbor's home or your loved one's home uh, or school or your work or wherever you happen to be. Uh, so we want to make sure that everybody has access to these really great resources. Um, we did forget to bring this, but luckily, mm -hmm. Councilman had a copy um, from a couple copies. Of yes, yeah, right. Kevin back had back. brought back. Awesome. Yes. Our behavioral health directory. This is the most updated version, and we have it in Spanish as well. It is also online, so you can get there through um, through our website, the Clark County Health Department, or if you've heard of the Partnership for a Healthier Clark County. But we'll make sure I'll make sure you have all of those resources. Um, we really are of all about resiliency, uh, your health and well-being, and emotional health is as important as your physical and somatic health. Lastly, we want to talk about naloxone. So naloxone training we offer to every single person in the community. If anybody has naloxone, that's awesome. We give um, two doses to every person when we do a training. I carry mine all the time because you never know when you may see somebody who might be overdosing. Um, Kath is pulling out everything that we give you in a kit. Face masks. Yeah. And so, so you can do rescue breathing. You don't have to. You get trained on how to use it. But we also have naloxone cabinets. They're, um, they look like newspaper dispensers, the ones where you lift up the lid. And, you're, and um, we have put them in, so far, 14 locations around Carroll County, um, the health department, libraries, um, the on our own in Carroll County, the local, you mentioned HSP, Human Services. Um, they have one in their agency and the local homeless shelter. And the idea really is that it's easy access to get naloxone. Um, you don't have to get trained. You can look up the training online. We have a little QR code on the box. And people can just discreetly go and anonymously go up and take a box of naloxone and have it either because they might be using drugs or one might be using drugs, or they just want to have it on their person. Um, and then we just refill those boxes regularly. So we thought you might have an idea if you wanted to get a box and it. It does have to be indoors because it's not a temperature controlled box. Um, yeah, so we've been kind of going through that for the last, since the last coalition meeting, and actually the last two. Um, and I've, I've asked around. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a a public space, uh, you know, we talked about um, the fire hall, but um, we didn't think that might be the most effective place. The, um, the other, there was a suggestion that maybe the post office, I don't know if that's feasible or not. Um, but then I also um, reached out to uh, the 7-Eleven and I took them some literature from our last meeting and um, one of the managers there, well, not the owner, but the manager, w was all about it. She thought, for sure. Point of me bringing that up lastly was that um, I, th we, I, I mentioned it to Amy Legelli, and um, I thought maybe she was going to go by there. So maybe we can recircle yeah, or circle so back on that. Yeah, we'll probably have, obviously, we work together. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So we'll talk, we can talk about it this week, and then... Um, our harm reduction folks, because this falls under harm reduction, reducing the risk of harm from drug use. Some people are not ready to stop using drugs. This falls under harm reduction, so we certainly can go visit, show them what the box. We can bring the box. It's really not heavy. It's big, but not heavy. Um, and see if you know if we can get authorization and put it there. We're happy to put it wherever the most foot traffic is that yeah. people will come upon it. So. Deputy McGinnis want to talk about the pop-up today? Sure. 
Okay. So what happened today? The yeah, the resiliency event. event. Yeah. So I know Deputy McGinnis was there, and Councilman McCormick was there, and our guys who were there. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Our colleagues uh, did that pop-up event, and I'll let you guys, because I was not there. I would like to. So really, I mean, just to touch on things real quick, I mean, really, this is about resiliency and, and overcoming um, you know, internal costs. And, and, you know, if somebody's depressed, if somebody's going through something, you know, we, we need to let them know that we're here for them. We have tremendous resources in the county. Um, these resources, I work with them day to day. Um, and unfortunately, uh, some, some dark things touched this area of the county this past month. So we want to get word out there that we're here for you. I mean, and that's, um, and, and I, I guess that was my big takeaway of the neighboring event. Um, very similar resources over there, uh, you know, with, with the naloxone, the training and that, and the overdoses that, that we encounter on a daily basis. And, and, you know, not up here, fortunately, but throughout the county, we encounter overdoses on a daily basis, unfortunately, now. Um, so we, we want to get people educated and trained in that. But we also want them to know that, hey, you know, we all go through something. We're all humans, mm -hmm. you know. Just like our bills, you know, that we were alluding to earlier. We all got bills to pay, but at the same time, we all have demons. So uh, it's good to know that these resources are here and available, and, and um, we're, we're open doors. I mean, I'm open doors. You know, people sometimes see the uniform and think they want to run another direction, but really, um, just, just, yeah, just <laughs> sit down and talk to people, trust me. I mean, we, we will figure it out one way or another. Um, and we're a team, and we want people to know that. Um, is there anything else? Can you talk about the take back event? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, the take back event, there's a take back event that is happening on April, was it? 20th. 20th, yes. So, that's going to be at um, the Waste Management Center in Carroll County, and we're going to be doing a bulk shred event at the same location. So, if you have a bunch of tax papers or Personal documents are just piling up at home. You want to get rid of them? You can actually watch them shred it on the truck. It's pretty cool. So uh, we're going to have that there, so you can do your bulk shred. And then we're going to be doing drug take back, which is also uh, including uh, syringe uh, type items, needles, and they don't normally do that. So that's we're expecting a pretty big turnout. It's nice to have that because a lot of people, even with their diabetic needles, aren't um, aware of where to start. Uh, so. We do have a drop box at the Carroll County Sheriff's Office. We also have one at the Western City Police Department. I believe that um, you guys may have one as well. No? Uh, yeah, we okay. have one, but there's several throughout the county, and that can be found on the health department's Lib website. Libraries, for libraries. Library. Yeah, yeah and, but there's only certain items that you can discard in there. So the, this fall shred event's really good because it'll, it'll be a good um, take back where you can, you can dispose of the needles. And if you want more information about the health department, just think about keeptalkingcarroll.org. And if you plug that in, it'll give you a whole litany of information regarding the health department and the services we have. Yeah. On these little lovely <laughs> right? Yeah. It'll get you to our website. Yeah. Everywhere you need to go in between. Um, I've also left my my business cards back here because we only did the tiniest of overview, but we have a wealth of resources to offer. And um, I just want to make sure you have a contact there. So please feel free to call me or anybody in the health department, and they will give you what you need. Um, uh, it's eight to eight or seven. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going <laughs> to ask. I just have one more thing. Anybody that does want to call 98 but is still looking for services, they can call the health department, 410-876-4449. And we can get them into services regarding their insurances, no matter what it is, and um, somebody's ready to go into services. We're there for them. So, Kevin, I'm sorry. When was the drug take back? Well, April twentieth. Is that the same as the vehicle maintenance facility? Yes. Okay. It is. All right. Because yeah. Yeah. They, they can actually never no, be insured. Right. They can take back more than what we can alone, so they can take back like the vape, um, the vape uh, juices or whatever, yeah. the liquids and some other things that we can't do. We did a take back in October, which was wildly successful. It was horrible weather like today, um, but it was wildly successful. Kevin, you took how many pounds of medication? Ninety-six pounds. I was in a spare vehicle then, and I filled the uh, yeah. cage. There was a cage in the back. Our newer ones don't have cages, but this one had a cage. And I filled that whole section up with medication. With medications. And yeah. then we 
also yeah. took uh, island on the containers of syringes to return. People brought their pet syringes and their syringes, mm -hmm. and they just, you know, they don't want people to get stuck with them in the trash. So we have a lot going on. Please don't hesitate to call. Um, it's all about really prevention and intervention. So we want to get to the kids before they ever get too far down. We want to build resiliency. We want to build the tools in their toolbox, coping skills, parenting skills, et cetera, et cetera. But if they've already gone, you know, are, are dealing with things and are experiencing <coughs> symptoms of things, please call us. Please call 98. Please call somebody. Mm -hmm. Please give the numbers out. That's the main thing you can do is give the information to another person or do it yourself. And we'd love to see you at National Night Out and yeah, also also yeah. musical on the main. We have been oh, looking sure. for Okay, we're always at National yeah. Night Out, but music yeah. on the main. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll look forward to more information right. on that. So I was down to pop up. Hopefully, there's more people coming out yeah. later. So. We did talk about maybe one of the carnival sometime that week. All right. Um, somewhere. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one other thing. We're. Uh, if I was asleep at the wheel on this, we're going to do, um, it's the, uh, in August, August and September, the uh, awareness months. Oh, recovery. For, recovery awareness yes. month. September uh, is the recovery uh, month, and the August 31st is the awareness day. International. International overdose awareness day. Right, and so what we're going to, this might be just a baby step to get started, but I, one of the things we were hoping to do is to um, light the town purple. And, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, again, it's, it's a progressive thing, so maybe we can do some lighting around yeah. um, some of the town square, yeah. you know, yeah, facilities. We'll setting out the toolkit for that probably okay. in June or so okay. um, to each of the municipalities. Last year, we lit up the health department. We're hoping to get bigger and bigger. Um, there's lots of, things you can, yeah, lots of things that you can do to kind of acknowledge um, that overdose is a thing, um, support people who are struggling with substance use, and then recovery month, we're going to have some events, so we're going to look out for that that September. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, new business zoning village center, conditional use addition. So this is me. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I believe that we, uh, as the town council, have already discussed this. Um, it's now been discussed twice by the Planning Commission, and it is their recommendation that an ordinance be written to create a new conditional use within the village center zoning to allow breweries and distilleries. Um, I'm not sure how the ball got dropped uh, on this, but I wanted to loop everyone back in on it. Um, want to get agreement that we want to move forward with it, and then we can give Michelle the, the nod, and she can move forward with an ordinance. So, so our town in our village center, that's around town here, does not have an, a, a, a conditional use to allow a brewery or a distillery. Um, we want to make it a conditional use because that still gives us um, the authority to grant or not grant based upon conditions for the, the business. So not every person, not every building in the village center could say, I'm going to be a brewery. It, right. it's, a, it's a conditional use, not a permitted use. Um, so I, I, I know we've talked about it because I know we've talked about breweries and distillers before. I know we talked about it at the Planning Commission twice. And um, I want to make sure it gets done um, so it's not a roadblock to anybody that may want to do something with a property that we have here in town that could, could be uh, a, a use for that. So I'm Move looking forward. looking for some head nods and or, or, or conversations. Because I think I brought this up a couple years ago. It, it, it's, yeah. it's been brought up, and, and I went, after my walkthrough, I went back and I pulled out the zoning and I reviewed it, and I was like, where is it? I know we've talked about it. I know we've yeah. nodded heads, but I want to... Bring it all back in. Michelle, you've heard it now. I hear it. Um, so we'll make it happen. Uh, it won't be a, a big deal, I'm, I'm told. So we'll have this done quickly. Thank you all. Thank you. Resolution 04-03-24, no change to water and sewer base and usage rates for fiscal year 25. Yes, 
So we're for the second straight year, uh, the town is able to hold the water and sewer base rate and usage rates for fiscal year 25, which begins July 1st of this year, 2024, and ends June 30th of 2025. So we have a resolution. I got it up. Which is up there. 40324. Correct. I hear a motion. For adoption of resolution of 40324. I'll make that motion. I'll second. We have a motion second to adopt resolution 04 03 24. No change to water and sewer base and usage rates for fiscal year 25. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? So carry. Any other new business? Old business. Snader's water. Snader's. Summit Water's uh, Water Booster Station Phase Two Piping Upgrades. Put anything on the screen. Mm -hmm. You want to take that one? Okay. That so, um, I think about Snitter. it's been about a year ago. Yeah, it was. We, it was back in um, March sorry, 23. I, March of twenty three. Um, the Phase One uh, piping upgrades were approved by Council for twenty three thousand three eighty five. Those. For, uh, phase one upgrades have been complete. They were paid for um, from ARPA funds. And then Tony's going to discuss uh, um, Mid Atlantic's proposal for the phase two piping upgrades. Again. Okay, so as a, as a recap, um, we've invested money um, in the suction line for the station, um, new pipes or new pumps, and then phase one construction of the interior piping. Um, it's our main booster station, water booster station, that transfers the water from our well site to our towers. So it's a very important uh, site. Um, so at the time, uh, yeah, I think it took somewhere around six or seven months to get the, the, the piping and materials and valving. Um, the lead times are going to be less than that now probably only a month or two, uh, so they significantly improved. But it's something that we would like to finalize uh, to complete the refurbishment of the station. Um, and so we received two prices. Uh, one was from a contractor that installed the, the, uh, the pumps, and they were $39,000. Um, and then we received a second quote from Mid-Atlantic of 30, 37,840. Uh, so we're looking for council approval to approve the uh, second phase of the work in the station. All right, do I hear everybody understand all that? Do, you, do I hear a motion to approve Mid Atlantic Utilities proposal for phase two piping upgrades for 37,840 and pay with ARPA funds? That is not residence funds. I'll make that motion. Second. A motion and a second to approve Mid-Atlantic Utilities proposal for phase two piping upgrades for 37840 to be paid by ARPA funds. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of signifying me saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? So carry. Keep on going. Snader's Water Booster okay. Station. Okay. Bear with me here. I'm going to try to pull up the bid tab. This is the bid tab. Okay. So... The second part of this very important project and a project from the past uh, is uh, both at Snader's Booster Station and Hillside Well Sites. Uh, once we install the new pumping at the booster station, um, Hillside um, Wells has been completed already. Um, so a little background information. Basically, when they install the new piping and the valves, it's primer coated. Um, and so we're looking to paint the entire interior piping to seal it uh, for longevity. Um, so we reached out to four vendors uh, that were qualified to do the work and received three bids. Um, we are looking to paint the pipes to um, preserve the integrity of the metal and safeguard our investment. Uh, the first quote is Frederick Painting. Um, they met all requirements uh, for both sites. The total cost was 22031 And then the second company was Barrett Coatings, um, and their cost was 10725 
And then the third quote was Ease Painting, and their cost was $22,728. Um, the differences in the prices are because the, the preparation methods of the metal. Uh, the other larger figures that we see from Frederick and Ease of Painting are because they're, they're recommending sandblasting the metal to bare metal. Um, that's not a necessity. They're already factory primed. They're in good shape. Uh, we would see a significant cost savings. Um, basically, the pipes at Hillside are about a year and a half old. Um, and the pipe, pipes at the booster station on phase one are about a year old or so. And the second phase, they'll be brand new. So we really think uh, the cost savings is worth it for the town and recommend approving Barrett coatings at 10725 Did the other two companies know that they didn't have to? They, they did. So uh, the RFP information is in the mayor and council folder. And so basically we asked them to provide their method of preparation. Um, and that was up to them to decide how they would prepare it. Okay. And Wayne, just for clarification, that price is for both the booster station and the Hillside Wells piping, correct? Correct. Yes. That's total cost. All right. Any questions or comments before I ask for a motion? Where are we paying for this? This, this, will, this will be ARPA as well? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Motion to, do I hear a motion to approve Barrett Coatings proposal for Snader's Water Booster Station and Hillside Wells pipe painting, pipe painting for $10,725 and pay with ARPA funds? I'll make that motion. A second. I second. I have a motion regarding all that. Any questions or comments? Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> to be about all 830. That. All that. Yeah. All those in favor, saying by and saying aye. 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 Those opposed, so carry. All right. all right, thank you. Now, Mayor, I know you already said this, but because I'm hoping we still have an audience online, that's about fifty thousand dollars in expenses to for upgrades that are necessary to our water system. And it's all being paid for with federal funds that we got a couple of years ago. Yep. So that would all have been passed on to the residents and increased bills if we hadn't gotten the money. Yep. So this, this is almost every meeting, folks. If you watch, you'll see that kind of thing happening. So when the mayor says he's doing everything he can to keep the bill down, this is another example of that. Mm -hmm. All right, fiscal year 25 budget. Introduction yeah, and ordinance. Keep this ball rolling here. <laughs> so since the uh, uh, no changes to the FY25 budget since we last presented and discussed at the March 18th work session, budget is ready for introduction in accordance with budget review schedule. Uh, the notice of the public hearing advertisement will be submitted if we introduce here tonight to the Carroll County Times tomorrow by 5 p.m. so that it will run... Uh, in accordance with code requirements for two weeks. And then the uh, budget hearing and adoption will be at the May 1st uh, council meeting. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier, once again, no property tax increase for the ninth straight year. Just to recap, we have a total budget of $2,507,447. That breaks down to general fund of $1,151,810 an enterprise fund of $1,355,637. So that, I've got clarification from Attorney Ostrander that the, we introduce, uh, the, this will be an ordinance, and that ordinance will get tonight's date on it of 04-03-24, and then after the hearing and adoption, then we'll, we'll sign that, that ordinance uh, next month. Here, a motion to introduce fiscal year 25 budget by ordinance 04 03 24. I'll make that motion. I'll second, second the. Second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second to uh, introduce fiscal year 25 fiscal year 25 budget by ordinance 04 03 24. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, signify when you're saying aye. 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 Those opposed? So carry. Thank you, staff, for doing another outstanding job. So, any other old business? All right, residents' concerns. 
Got one of these. State your name and address, please, sir. I'm Richard Wolf. I live at 205 Main Street. The thing I would like to know is why the town one more than not developed it up over two months. There it is. Can we see that taken care of? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Also, I got to fix that. I understand I need to do three uh, minutes, three points. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take a look at that, sir. Yep. Maybe we just parry the on that without too much expense. Thank you, sir. Any other residents' concerns? Not on the list, no. All righty. Announcements. Uh, let's see if I can remember them all. <laughs> April 27th, uh, Bulk Trash and Beautification Day. Carnival is May 21st through the 25th. Parade is 22nd, um, 7 p.m. Um, Mr. Wolf will be in charge of crab cakes again. <laughs> For how many years? <laughs> April 20th is uh, Take Back Day uh, along with Shredding Day. Um, oh, the basketball game for tomorrow night has been postponed until May 16th. All right. Anything going on with the. Uh, Nothing this month. Nope. Anybody else have anything? All right. If not, thank you for everybody coming out. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? No. 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 Close session. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Close, close session. session. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I asked enough. I got a picture of <laughs> Motion to move close session for per general provisions, Article 3-305B4, to consider a matter that concerns the proposal for a business or industrial organization to locate, expand, or remain in the state. Do I hear a motion for that? I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? A second. All those in favor, saying five, saying aye. 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 At 8.36. All right. Thank you, everybody. Conference room.